Bonjour, hi, and welcome to my apartment atelier. It's fall, y'all, and I'm going on an adventure. This video is going to be a little different because it's part one of a three-part mini-series in which I'll be making two new garments and putting them together with some old fast fashion pieces to make a history-bounding outfit worthy of a road that goes ever on and on. In this video, I'll be focusing on the skirt, which I'm making using my self-drafted keystone walking skirt pattern. If you've been hanging out in the costume space for any amount of time, you'll probably have met this skirt already. I won't be going into the drafting process in this video, but I have linked a PDF of the Keystone Drafting Guide in the description below. I've actually made this skirt a few times before, with each one being a sort of wearable mock-up that improved each time I made one. This one is, in fact, my fourth, so not only have I had the chance to make small tweaks here and there with each skirt, I've also gotten really fast at making it. I'm actually aiming to get this one done within one long weekend, so let's see how this goes. For the lining, I'm using some navy blue cotton yardage that was from my $5 fabric haul a couple of months ago. There's a lot of it, and I think I only used about half of it for this skirt lining with cabbage for the pockets. However, the fashion fabric I'm using was in the end of bolt section at my local fabric store, so there wasn't very much of it left. I think there's maybe a little over 2 meters of it, but it's pretty wide so I should be able to use up most of it with this skirt. One thing I do quite often is shop the discount section of my local fabric store. In addition to bolt ends, mine also has heavy discounts on out-of-season fabrics and bargain bins where you can get what's called a coupon in French, basically remnants such as miscuts or end of bolts less than one meter long. These are incredibly cheap and I've gotten some amazing fabrics this way, but as you can imagine, these sections can be pretty short on yardage, which can be challenging for any sewist. What I like to do when I'm looking in these sections is to try and find fabric that is the same on both sides. If it's got a pattern, I check if it's small enough that any inability to pattern match is not too noticeable. And even better, if it's symmetrical, because if I have to turn some pattern pieces crosswise, they'll still look the same as the rest. This particular fabric is a great example of that. It's a small plaid pattern that is perfectly square and looks the same from all directions and on both sides. It's also easy to match, meaning as long as I manage to get the tops of my pieces roughly along the same line of the pattern, it won't be too wonky at the seams. Those of you who are good at spatial recognition will have noticed that I have two pieces laid out as if they were for the same side of the skirt. However, because this fabric is the same on both sides, and because laying out the pieces with their bias edges next to one another allowed me to conserve enough fabric for the waistband and placket, this wasn't a problem. I was able to remove my basting stitches from one of the two pieces and put the lining on the other side of it without any issues. That gave me one of each side, and nobody except anyone watching this video will know that they were cut otherwise. Of course, all adventuring garments require pockets, particularly of the Trixie variety, and the one I'm using today is from Patterns of Fashion 2. It's my first time using this particular pocket pattern. It's a large pear-shaped pocket, which I've actually made slightly larger for my purposes, and it goes on slightly differently than the modern side seam pockets that I had in my Release the Kalkbrocken video. I like drafting up small pattern pieces on tracing paper on top of my cutting mat, as it's convenient and doesn't require me to hunch over gridded paper on the floor. I'm using cabbage from the skirt lining to make the pockets. There was enough left over for me to do this without having to use the uncut yardage of the navy blue fabric or a different fabric altogether. I decided not to face the inside of the pockets with the plaid fabric as it really doesn't bother me if the navy blue peeks out.
There are only two darts on this at the front, and with this particular fabric, I do want to get the darts as aligned as possible since they are so visible. I'm using a ladder stitch to firmly base them down from the fashion side, and later I'll sew along the stitching line with my machine to make the darts really tight. Alright, now let's get back to the pockets, because that's what we all want to see, right? This pocket pattern has two pieces that are basically the same, except the piece that goes into the seam is slashed down the middle from the top. The placket was put in on the left hand side of the opening at center back and stitched in place, and then I sewed the center back seam. Afterwards, the right hand side of the opening was turned over twice and pinned in place so I could sew it down later. I also added three lines of gathering thread into the tops of the two back panels. For my measurements, the tops of the back panels have to be pleated or gathered down into about half of their original width. Once I ironed the waistband in half, I pinned one edge to the wrong side of the skirt first and then sewed it off camera with the skirt wrong side down on the machine to make sure all the gathers were caught. Then I flipped the waistband up folded it in half once to bring it over to the front, and then folded up the serged edge to have a clean line to sew against. I then realized I had too much excess sticking out rather lifelessly at the top, so I folded that down and top stitched around all four sides of the waistband to make it sturdier and narrower.
again, off camera, I hung up the skirt when it was all sewn together so it could stretch a little more. Since I don't have a body form, I use a couple of light hangers that have clips on them and put the hangers on some hooks that we have in our living room that usually hold garlands in the winter. I then measured from the waist down to where I wanted the hem of the skirt to be and marked that in a chalk line on the inside. I cut some of the excess below the chalk line to make it a little more even. After cutting off the excess at the hem, the first thing I did was pin and sew a narrow length of plain twill tape all around. I then folded the twill tape over the raw edge and pressed it flat along the seam. Next, I folded up the hem along the chalk line I marked and pressed and pinned as I went. Don't quote me on it, but I think I heard somewhere that it helps a lot if the fabric cools in the position you press it in, so I'm pinning as I go to see if that works at all. Using cotton thread and a small needle, I felt the free edge of the twill tape to the skirt, being sure to catch only the lining so that there wouldn't be any pin pricks or dimpling on the fashion side of the skirt. After a quick press on the very edge of the hem from both sides, I sewed in my closures as well as my usual tags, and it's done. As I mentioned earlier, there isn't going to be a reveal for the skirt in this video. You'll have to watch out for that a little later on this month, which is also when you'll see who's joining me on this history bounding adventure. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me today and making it through to the end of the video, especially if you're new to my channel. I really appreciate your support, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. You can also find me on Instagram for updates in between projects, and quite often glimpses of what I've been having for breakfast, second breakfast, eleven zoos, luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, and supper. I hope you enjoyed your visit today. À la prochaine!